Hey, what's up, guys? Yeah, so this is my final analytic number theory video. And uh, yeah, the topic I want to talk about is that the, the contour, the contour analytic continuation for zeta function. Okay, so uh, let me just recall that the, the previous that we get the analytic continuation uh, by related the zeta function to this Jacobi's zeta function, which is defined by this. And uh, we use a free analysis to prove uh, this this has weird relation. And once we have this, then we can write our, uh, you can write this star with gamma function and then you copy uh, just do some calculation. Then the finally you can prove that gamma is divided by two and the, uh, the story should be, uh, it should be S, right? So zeta divided S and the pi S divided by two is related to this psi function. And this is psi is uh, related to the Jacob zeta function. So this is the previous proof. Okay, so uh, yeah, but this is not the, this is one way. And the other way is using the, the, using the contour approach. Okay, so this is another idea. You usually another textbook idea that how to do the zeta, the analytic continuation of zeta function. Okay, so this is what I want to describe in this video. Uh, yeah. So the the idea is to follow. Okay, idea is that the uh, idea is that uh, let's say let's say I consider this uh, this integral. Okay, so this can be circle or or the rectangle is fine. I consider this, and let's say this is epsilon, and uh, also let's consider a circle or radius, a circle or a square is fine, and because we will take r to be infinity, and uh, consider the following function. Uh, exponential uh, z minus one and uh, uh, d omega. Sorry, it's not exponential z minus one. It's a uh, it's omega z minus one and the exponential omega minus one. Okay, so now consider a c. So this c is uh, this contour. This is called a uh, uh, this is called a Henkel a uh, Henkel contour. Okay, uh, so once we uh, one, once we do this, then the, let's let's first uh, let's first come let's first uh, assume that this real z is greater than zero. Okay, uh, so if we do this, then, then we can see that uh, let's say this is a and b. Okay, we can see that the integral of a will be give you a zero to infinity. Let's say take epsilon to be uh, very small, so we get uh, this. Okay. And uh, there's uh, there's another one that uh, you take you take b right so you take b and uh, uh, for this b you need to remember that uh, you need to remember that uh, your omega should be written as uh, exponential two pi i uh, 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 say two pi x right because you want to other uh, maybe your branch cuts which come from this z minus one okay so you get the uh, you get the uh, uh, negative infinity to zero. Okay, and uh, exponential two pi i z minus one, and the uh, x z minus one divided by exponential x minus one and the uh, dx. Okay. Okay, so if you add them, and you combine zero to infinity, you get one minus exponential two pi i z minus one x z minus one exponential x minus one dx okay and uh, you can use and uh, you can combine this into you can take out uh, let's say you can uh, for these terms you can just take out the exponential pi i negative pi i uh, z minus one and that is exponential pi i z minus one minus exponential negative pi i z minus one and for these terms, uh, you can preserve, and then this term you can write as a sine function, right? So we got two i uh, sine uh, pi z minus pi. Okay, yeah, you get this exponential factor. There is a minus sign which comes from exponential i pi, but there is an, another minus sign. Okay, so uh, you can you, you can see that uh, for this guy you can write uh, write as a Oh, sorry, there's an original minus sign here because this, the first term is one, right? Uh, sorry, well, a 
very bad notation. Yeah, so one and then this is or yeah, this is plus and this is minus. Okay, so you got another minus one here, and then there's a this guy will give you another minus one. Okay, so you will uh, you you can see your final results will be negative to i exponential pi i z and the uh, sine pi z. And uh, with this integral, this integral is a uh, famous results that uh, is, is x z minus one is more than x minus one. The x, I think I proved before, is that this will be gamma z and the zeta z. So gamma z, zeta z. Okay, so this is the first, this is the first, e first equation. Okay. Okay, so this is the the first. Uh, just you just uh, this is not all the contour integral, right? But should be just only take a contour integral up to a and b. Okay. Okay, but now uh, but now you can see there's a there's a problem that if I compute this one, right, I should get a two pi i of residue. So there would maybe uh will be some residue here. Okay, so let's go to the next page. So your function looks like this. Okay, so if you want to calculate the residue, uh, you need to know the pole, right? So the pole is exponential x equals to one. So x will be two pi i m z. That's your two pi i m, and the m should be integer. Okay, and uh, you can check that. Uh, you don't need to worry about. You don't need to worry about x equals to zero because we choose a small circle. Okay, so this integral. Over this branch, let's say you over all the contour. The let's omega, let's say I use omega here, uh, will be the two pi i summation of residue. Let's say n from one to infinity residue two pi i n right, plus uh, residue. So this is omega negative two pi i n. Okay, so this is the residue. Okay, and uh, you can uh, do very hard code calculation. Let me just write. Let me just write down the. Let me just write down the detail. Let me just write down the key point, and uh, then and I will finish the detail. So this part you can prove by yourself is two pi n z minus one uh, exponential uh, i pi z minus one divided by two. And the, the least term will be 2 pi n z minus 1 exposure 3 i pi z minus 1 divided by 2. Okay, so you can just do the hard code calculation by yourself. It's not difficult. You get the uh, negative 2 z plus 1 pi z i exposure i pi z psi pi z divided by 2. And you get summation of n from one to infinity, one over uh, minus one divided by z. Okay, now this is uh, you can define this. This is zeta one minus z. Okay, so now if you do this, then uh, you naturally you naturally prove the following. You naturally prove. You just naturally show this. Show this. You show the negative to i exponential pi i z sine pi z gamma z theta z equals to exponential negative 2 z plus 1 pi z i exponential i pi z sine pi z divided by 2 times gamma uh, zeta 1 minus z. Okay, and uh, you can just uh, do the calculation and uh, very simple that uh, you get, you can finally get the zeta z you just remove you just use the you just divide everything to the to the to the right then you get to z pi z minus one the calculation is a tricky is a just just tedious okay okay you can see that at least you can write the sine equals to two sines cosine and uh so there, there will be another term uh another sine pi z divided by two here but just do some do some replacement, and then you can prove the follow. So this is uh, you can check that this also just prove that lambda z is also lambda s 
So lambda z is a lambda one minus z, and then lambda z is a zeta z gamma z divided by two pi z divided by two. Okay, so this is the standard functional equation of zeta function. Okay, so this is the standard proof. This is the counter analytic continuation using the counter integral. Okay, so the rest is to prove that the the rest the the rest detail is to prove that the residue of this function of this uh, uh, omega of this omega z minus one divided by exponential omega minus one at the residue of z equals to uh, sorry omega equals to two pi i n is the two pi z um, sorry two pi n z minus one times the previous let me just let me just let me just pass this i n uh, equals to two pi n z minus one exponential i pi z divided by two okay so let me just copy exponential i pi z minus one divided by two okay so this is the the final thing that we need to do we need to show this okay so we know this is the simple pole so in we just need to right so for a simple pole we just need to do the do the limit omega approach to 2 pi i n and the omega minus 2 pi i n omega z minus 1 divided by exponential omega minus 1 0 divided by 0 so we can use the Laplace rule so let's do the differentiation respect to the denominator you get exponential omega with the numerator you get omega 2 pi i n the z minus 1 omega z minus 2 and the plus omega z minus 1 Okay. Okay, then I that limit approach to two pi i n, right? So these two this term canceled and these term become one. So final result will be two pi i n, two pi i n z minus one, which is a two pi n z minus one times i to the z minus one. Okay, and i just is potential pi i divided by two. So you get the you get the these terms. That's it. Okay. And uh, if you change this uh, n to be negative, then there will be a uh, negative i, so it's exponential uh, 3i pi divided by divided by 2. Okay, and uh, once you do the uh, brute force calculation and uh, prove, prove the rest, and then you, then you prove the functional equation, then this will give you an analytic continuation of zeta function, use the counter integration. Okay, so uh, yeah, this is my final analytic number theory video, and I hope you guys subscribe to my channel. See you guys.